this video we're going to look at differentiation and we're going to start by looking at the chain rule. Uh, before we get on to the chain rule, we're going to just do a very, very quick recap of what we know from last year. So last year in your AS1, we would have started with y and you differ and differentiate the y with respect to x. So this is what this means. dy by dx means you've differentiated y with respect to x. So differentiate y with respect to x takes you to dy by dx. If you differentiate that again with respect to x, it takes you to, and how you say this thing is d2y by dx squared. Or if instead of writing your y as y, you'd write it as a f of x, so that means a function of x. Then if you differentiate, you go to f dash of x. And if you differentiate again, you go to f double dash of x. So this is a very easy way to remember it. Then you can see and the dash, one dash means uh, f of x has been differentiated once, and the double dash means uh, f of x has been differentiated twice. Okay, before we get on to uh, the chain rule, we're going to look at how we would have had to have differentiated these uh, two examples here. So, in this first one, uh, in this first one, you would say your dy by dx, and you just differentiate term by term. Now, just to remind you, if y is equal to a x to the power of n, then differentiation dy by dx is going to be equal to uh, the a stays, and then your power multiplies. And you reduce your power by one so that's all we're going to do so here uh, if you differentiate 7x cubed you're going to get 21x squared if you differentiate 5x squared you're going to get 10x if you differentiate 2x you just get 2 and if you differentiate 1 you don't get anything it's just 0 so your answer dy by x is equal to 21x squared plus 10x plus 2 okay this really is going to, we're going to look at the chain rule uh, to, to do this, uh, to, well, a question like this in the future. But for the, uh, in this type of one, what we would have done in AS is you just would have multiplied this out. So we just write it out as 3x minus 1 upon 3x minus 1, and then multiply out and see what you get. If you multiply, you'll get 9x squared minus 3x minus another 3x, so that's going to be minus 6x, and minus 1 is minus 1 is plus 1. You could then differentiate. And see what you get. So if you differentiate, you're going to get 18x minus 6, and that's it. But as I say, we will see a, a different way that we could do this. That's fine whenever the power is 2. But as we'll see in the next example, if your power had been 6, this would have been a very, very difficult thing to do. Okay, uh, there's a better way to differentiate. So if you had a 3x minus 1 and it was the power of 6, uh, what you would have to do. Uh, in AS1, it just expand that bracket, multiply it all out, and then differentiate. So it will be horrendous, really, really difficult, and it will be very easy to make a mistake. So the better way of doing it is this. So if you differentiate 3x minus 1, all to the power of 6, what you get is 18 upon 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. Now, you probably can't see where that, you probably cannot spot anything. So I'm just going to write in uh, something here and then explain it what's going on. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this as we will work through and see. Okay, what I've written in here is differentiate WRT. Remember that means from last year with respect to. So with respect to the bracket, then differentiate the bracket. So that probably doesn't mean an awful lot to us. So we're just going to look at this, how this actually works. So if you had your y is equal to 3x minus 1, and that was the power of 6 your dy by dx, so if you differentiate with respect to the bracket, so we're going to forget about what's actually in the bracket. I'll just put down a wee bracket here, but leave it empty at the time being. And I'm going to multiply, bring the power down, so the power multiplies uh, in front of the bracket, and then you reduce your power by 1, so it goes down to 5. Then what you want to do is differentiate inside the bracket. So our bracket is 3x minus 1. So differentiate 3x minus 1, you'll just get 3. And I will fill in what our bracket was inside. Our bracket was 3x minus 1. And if you multiply it out, you're going to get 6 times the 3 is 18 upon 3x minus 1. And it is to the power of 5. Now that really, that we have, we're going to look at a different way of doing it before we do it, do anything. But that is effectively what is going on um, here. So we're going to look at how we can do this a, a different way. You may not like this just yet. You will after a while. Uh, but we'll see a different way of doing it in a minute. Okay, so we're going to look at a, 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 what you may think is an easier way of doing it. So it may be easier to differentiate using the function of a function rule known as the chain rule. So 
we're using this so dy by dx to differentiate dy by dx you differentiate your y with respect to u and then you differentiate your u, u with respect to x that means nothing to it the minute so we're going to jump to the examples and see what we mean okay so in this question here it says differentiate the following so the first one you have y is equal to 2x minus 1 to the power of 3. And I'm going to say let u equal 2x minus 1. Uh, so that means I, your y is equal to u cubed. So you're, basically your u is pretty much always going to be the thing that's in the bracket. So inside my bracket was 2x minus 1. So that's what I'm going to let my u be equal to. And then you can rewrite your y as, in terms of u, as u to the power of 3. So we have two things to do. We've got to find dy by du, and we've got to find du by dx. So we'll say our du by dx. So u is equal to 2x minus 1. If you differentiate that, you just get 2. And your dy by du. y was equal to u to the power of 3. So that dy by u, differentiate with respect to u, you're going to get 3u squared. So write out the whole formula again. That's the only way to get a new formula in your head. It was dy by dx is equal to dy by du times du by dx. And in this case, that's going to be equal to 3u squared. That was my dy by du. My du by dx was 2, which is just going to be 6 upon, so that's an equal sign there, 6 upon my u squared, so 6 upon 2x minus 1, all squared. Okay. Just to show us another way you could have done this one. So just squeeze that one in here and see another way we could do it. And we will look, be looking at this over the page in a minute as well, but just say, just to show you at this stage as well, just say, or. What you could do is just say your or your dy by dx is equal to. So differentiate with respect to the bracket. You're going to have 3 upon the bracket. The power of the bracket reduces down to just 2. And then differentiate inside the bracket. So differentiate this thing. So differentiate with respect to the bracket. 3 upon the bracket, which was 2x minus 1. And the power of the bracket was down to 2. And then differentiate inside the bracket, it just, you just get 2, which is just 6 upon 2x minus 1 squared. So it's the same idea. You can see this one's much quicker, but a lot of people like this method, as, as you can see clearly what you're doing. Okay, for this second example, we're just going to say uh, your y is equal to, I'm trying to get an index form, first of all, 1 minus x squared to the power of minus 5. And we're just going to say uh, that y equal u to the minus 5 and then your u is equal to 1 minus x squared so set this out a wee bit differently doesn't matter so my dy by du is going to be equal to minus 5u to the minus 6 so i've multiplied by the power reduced my power by 1 and then my du by dx is equal to minus 2x and then just write out your formula again it was dy by dx is equal to dy by du times du by dx just I didn't really talk through where that formula comes from if you imagine just uh, multiplying fractions and cancelling down dy by du times du by dx you can imagine this du and this du just cancel each other out leaving you dy over dx so that's sort of why this thing works a wee bit more to it than that but that's a nice simple way of thinking about it okay so we'll go back to just filling this in your dy by du then was equal to minus 5 and my u was 1 minus x squared and that was the power of minus 6 and then times my du by dx which was minus 2x which is got five, minus 5 times minus 2x is just going to be 10x and then that 1 minus x squared to the power of minus 6 is the same as 1 minus x squared to the power of 6 but it's on the, the bottom line. Okay, another way of saying all of this, so instead of doing a general, this is what I talked about earlier on when I talk about differentiate with respect to the bracket and then differentiate uh, the bracket. Okay, so here uh, we'll jump to the examples. We'll see this. You may like this. You may not. Have we read throughout yourself? But we'll just jump to uh, the examples on this. So 
example three and four and we're going to use this method so all i'm going to say keep saying in here is differentiate with respect to the bracket and differentiate the bracket okay first thing differentiate with respect to the bracket the power of the bracket is four so the four comes down and multiplies and write down your bracket don't mess around with it and reduce the power of your bracket by one now all you've got to do is differentiate inside the bracket so in this case differentiate inside the bracket 3x squared differentiated gives you 6x and then just multiply together the 4 times the 6x is 24x that's upon 3x squared minus 2 and that's the power of 3. okay first thing i'm going to do in this one is get it in index form so it's going to be x squared minus 2 x squared minus 2 and that's the power of minus 1 half we're now good to go we can differentiate with respect to the bracket which is going to be minus a half times x squared minus 2 reduce the power by 1 use improper uh, improper numbers here improper fractions that's now going to be minus sorry minus 3 over 2 and just differentiate inside the bracket it's just going to give you 2x okay sort out the minus a half times the 2x is just going to give you minus x and that's times x squared minus 2 to the power of minus 3 over 2. You may not like that, so uh, you can leave the minus x on the top, and we'll put x squared minus 2 in a bracket on the bottom line, and it's now to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, just to introduce a bit more problem solving to these type of questions, this example says find the equation of the tangent uh, to, uh, and the normal to the curve y is equal to 5 over x squared minus 3 at the point 2, 5. So first one, part A is asking for the tangent. Uh, either way, folks, tangent or normal, you've got to find dy by dx, which is, remember, dy by dx is the gradient function, so it will allow you to find uh, the gradient at any point. So just write down your equation. y is equal to, get an index form, 5 times x squared minus 3 to minus 1. And I'm going to use the differential with respect to the bracket method again. It's definitely easier. So dy by dx, differential with respect to, respect to the bracket, you'll have minus 5 times x squared minus 3, and that's the power of minus 2. And then differentiate the bracket, you'll have 2x. So what you have is minus 10x times x squared minus 3, and that's the power of minus 2, which is the same as just minus 10x over x squared minus 3 and that is squared on the bottom line okay we just want to say at so we word of mathematics makes it so much easier so at a x is equal to 5 you could have said when x is or sorry, uh, when x is equal to 2 or at x equals 2 your dy by dx is going to be equal to and it's going to be minus 20 on the top line that was minus 10 times a 2 and then put 2 into this 2 squared is 4 minus 3 is just 1, so 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is just 1, so it's minus 20 over 1, which is just minus 20. So this is a gradient of your tangent, minus 20, remember, is a gradient of your tangent. So all you have to say then, your tangent, what we know so far, tangent is y is equal to minus 20x plus c. So that's just your y equals mx plus c equation. How are we going to find this C? Is we just put in the point that I give you. So at 2, 5, my y value is 5, my x value is 2. So minus 20 times 2 is minus 40. And then plus C, which means 45 is equal to C. So my answer for part A is y is equal to minus 20x plus 45. Okay, part B is asking for the equation of the normal. We've already done an awful lot of the hard work here for the equation of the normal, because we know at x is equal to 2, my dy by dx was equal to minus 20. So we got that from over here. We've done all that work over here at x equals 2 dy by x. We worked out our dy by dx, and we subjected x equals 2 in earlier on. So just say, uh, therefore, the gradient of the normal and remember what the normal is normal is perfect the normal line is perpendicular to your tangent line so the gradient of your normal is a negative reciprocal of the tangent so negative reciprocal minus 20 you're going to get 1 over 20. so therefore your normal is 
y is equal to 1 over 20 times x plus c. Okay, just to uh, show you a co very common mistake that people do, a lot of people think the gradient of your the c, the intercept of the tangent, and the intercept of the normal are going to be the same. That is only going to happen in one instance, and that's if they both go through the origin. Otherwise, they're not going to be the same. So here, what you need to do is just say at 2, 5, and then go through the same process that you did for the tangent. So your y value is 5. And I'm just going to show you a bit more when I'm working out for this one, slightly harder numbers. So we have 5, 1 over 20 times 2 would be 1 tenth. So then 5 minus 1 tenth is equal to your C. So your C is equal to 4 and 9 tenths. So your answer, or uh, one way you could do it, you could say your answer for your normal, Y is equal to 1 over 20X plus 4 and 9 tenths. Okay. What a lot of you may not like is having those fractions. So if you multiply through everything by 20, you'll get 20y is equal to x and 20 times the 4 and 9 uh, tenths, and just do that in your calculator, is just going to be 98. And that's it. Okay, this example says find the coordinates and nature of any stationary points on the curve. And the curve isn't a nice one, it's y is equal to. 3x minus 1, and that's all to the power of 4. So coordinates in nature, if any station points, first of all, we're going to have to find dy over dx, find out when it's equal to 0. And then in nature is when you're going to have to find out d2y over dx squared and see if it's positive or negative. So first of all, uh, we'll find, say, our dy by dx is equal to, and that's going to be 4 times 3x minus 1, and that's the power of 3, and then times, oh, it's not working times uh, 3 so I've differentiated with respect to my bracket to get 4 upon 3x minus 1 and that's cubed then differentiate inside your bracket to give you 3 so tidy that up and you'll get 12 upon 3x minus 1 cubed okay next thing you want to do is put your dy by dx equal to 0 so put dy by dx equal to 0. And as I said, I've said over and over again, a wee word of mathematics makes all the difference. So put dy by x equal to 0 just shows what you're doing. So then 0 is equal to 12 upon 3x minus 1 cubed. So that happens. The only way that can happen is if this bracket is equal to 0. So that just means, therefore, therefore your 3x minus 1 is equal to 0 which means x is equal to one third. Okay, we also want that we, while we're here, we might as well find out what the y value is because it's going to be a point. So we just say when x is equal to one third, y is equal to, so if you put that back into the original equation, three times a third is one, one minus one is zero, zero to the power of four is zero. So you've got, this as a point. Now we'll come back to that later on uh, when we know a wee bit more about the nature of it. Okay, next thing we've got to do is find our d2y by dx squared. So, so the story so far is we know that a third zero is a, is a turning point of some description or a stationary point. We need to find out what type of stationary point it is. So if you differentiate, so how you get d2y by dx squared is you differentiate your dy by dx. So we're differentiating this thing now the 12 upon 3x minus 1 cubed. So differentiate with respect to the bracket, you're going to get 36 times 3x minus 1 squared. Differentiate inside the bracket, you're going to get 3. So when you multiply 3 times the 36, you're going to get 108 upon 3x minus 1 squared. And then what we have to do is find out the nature of the stationary point. So we need to see is d2y by x squared positive or negative when x is equal to a third so just say when x is equal to one third, d2y by dx squared is equal to 108 upon three times a third is one, one minus one is zero, zero squared is zero, zero times anything is zero, so it is equal to zero. Okay, this is 
the worst situation you can get when you're doing your stationary points. This is what we do not want to happen, and unfortunately it has happened. So if you get d2y by dx squared equal to zero, you do not know it could be a maximum turning point, a minimum turning point, or it could be a point of inflection. So you've got the night test around your x equals a third. So test slightly to the left of it and test slightly to the right of it. So I'm going to test. Uh, so I'm just going to write down a wee bit of information here and then we'll um, continue with the video. Okay, I've just said here, in this situation, you must test dy by dx around the stationary point. So what I mean around the stationary point, I mean slightly to the left of the stationary point. So I've gone slightly left of x equals one third, which would be x equals zero, and slightly to the right of x equals one third, and I've gone x equals x equals one. Uh, so at x equals zero, you want to test your gradient. So dy by dx is equal to, put in zero into your dy by dx function, three times zero is zero, minus one, uh, so it's just minus one, minus one to the power of a third, sorry, minus one to the power of three is minus one, minus one times 12 is minus 12. So that's what we've got. When you test, put in x equals one, three times one is three, three, uh, three minus one is two, two cubed is eight, eight times the 12 is going to be 96. So what we have got, You've got at x is equal to zero, you've got x is equal to a third, and you've got x is equal to one. So at x equals zero, it had a negative gradient. So it was my curve was sloping downwards. At x equals a third, it leveled off, and at x equals one, it was going up. So it was here. Uh, dy by dx is positive. Here dy by dx is zero, and here dy by dx is negative. So if you can look at the shape of the curve, so it was negative curve, leveled off at x equals a third, and then positive curve again. That's a positive sign there. Apologies, not very clear. So you can see the shape of that curve is a U-shaped part of the curve. So that means at x equals one third, it's a minimum turning point. And that was your final answer. So just say, therefore, uh, one third, zero, that was our stationary point, remember, is a minimum turning point. And that's it. Okay, folks, there's questions for you now that you're ready to do. Topic six, exercise one.